How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. I want to release this video to show you guys how I do a specific part of this full torso cover-up that I'm working on. It's going to take me a lot more than uh, three days, but I just wanted to show you the way I'm executing it. And tomorrow I'm going to be uploading another video of a different part of the, of the torso, but I'm going to explain it in Spanish. Uh, but it is exactly the same information as today. I'm just translating it in Spanish. Uh, para toda la gente que me está viendo, voy a subir este video que se va a tomar unos 30 a 20 minutos en explicar una parte de todo el torso que estoy haciendo en Emilio González. Este Es un proyecto muy grande que la verdad eh, me va a tomar más de tres días en ejecutar, pero hoy voy a subir este video en inglés y mañana voy a subir otro video explicando la misma información de hoy en español, solo en, un, en una área diferente de este torso, así es que disfruten. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, so here it is. This is what we're going to be working on for the next three days back to back. It's a full torso cover up. Uh, it's been years since he got this done, so it's ready. It's, it's he's ready to Emilio to reborn. And he's ready to get a new, a whole panel. Okay, here we go. So um, I'm gonna be recording real time how I'm gonna do the first layer before covering up the tattoo. So I'm not gonna be focusing on adding my light grays. I don't wanna focus on adding my medium grays. I want you guys to see how much influence the first layer with solid black has. That is my main purpose for, for this video. So here we go. With my 14 round liner, I'm going to be running it at 5.0. And I'm going to start here on the bottom of the stomach. On the bottom, I'm sorry, on the bottom of the nose. As you guys can see, there's a lot going on. There's a, the face, the lips, a nose is going on here, the chin. So I'm going to take advantage and uh, use a little bit of this uh, area that, ha that already has a little bit of that uh, shape. So I'm gonna take it down here. And like I said, the first layer, it is imper important. Important. <laughs> um, yeah, very important for, uh, for the first layer to be solid. It's really gonna create the map to create a good cover up. That's gonna be, that's what I'm gonna focus on. Here we go. Solid black. And there's so much behind this technique, uh, the scribble technique that it will take me hours to explain. But luckily, uh, in January 25th, I'm gonna be having a seminar, uh, Dynamic Headquarters, if you guys wanna join. Um, it's gonna be an amazing seminar sponsored by Dynamic. They're gonna have machines. They're gonna have all supplies ready for you so you can follow along and uh, make sure that you understand this process. Cause like I said, I can give you these videos and give you as many details as I can, but it's nothing like having, having me explain to you step-by-step step how to do a cover-up for 20 hours straight. Uh, and you get to ask me a lot of questions and I'm gonna be tattooing live. You get to see me and ask questions how I do certain things. So I'm not holding anything back, but in this situation, I'm teaching you how to, how the first layer is supposed to look like. So here we go. I'm using the scribble technique with my 14 mile liner. Because a lot of people think, a lot of artists, but I've seen that they try doing covers, they rely a lot on grays on using their grays and not necessarily, sometimes just having the, uh, a solid foundation of the first layer, that's all you need. Esta noche me iré con ella. Me tomo de la mano y me acarició. And by the way, uh, if you can notice, uh, I'm tattooing Emilio fucking Gonzalez in the house <laughs> he's not having so much fun right now but because <laughs> he's getting tattooed but if you know who he is you know that this motherfucker here he's killing it in the tattoo industry if you know him you know everyone he's been doing it for years how many years you've been in the industry 30 30 years in the industry 
He's the GOAT. Worldwide. Worldwide. He's been in every place in the world. 30 years traveling. He, 30 years, bro. Bro, I am 30, I am 30 years old. He's been in it before I was born. <laughs> he's been doing, he's been doing it, man. And, you know, I'm also very happy that I'm, I feel honored to be able to do this for him. So uh, that's why we decided to do an amazing concept for him. And that's why we are here trying to do an amazing cover up covering up this torso that he got done 20, 20 years ago, 28 years ago. Ah, damn. And uh, if you don't know about the amazing expo he does, it is in Miami, Florida, the All-Star Tattoo Convention, probably one of the, if not, one of the biggest ones in the world, surrounded by amazing artists, the best ones in the industry that people are coming in from Argentina, Colombia, Europe, and the best of the best here in the United States. So if you wanna, if you wanna go to a competitive and motivating expo, you gotta go to the All-Star. Even if you come and visit, like you don't have, you know, if you, if you are starting off your career and maybe this expo, it is a little too advanced for you, it's okay, come through. You're gonna learn a lot by just watching the, the best of the best artists perform. It is a, uh, an amazing opportunity to be there. You're gonna have Waller, Jomico, Darwin, Arlos, Waller, Fred, uh, Jason, man. And, and the list goes on. That's just a few that top of my head. Here it is. This is what I'm doing here, trying to close the Give it, give it a glare in the middle of the nose so we don't lose that. But I am gonna be using the bottom of the lip here to help me and do, um, and do like a different dimension to the nose because sometimes you don't have to cover it up. Sometimes you can use it uh, and help you do something better. Look at that, that's already taking shape. And yep, that is definitely gonna help me out to create a, a different dimension to, to the nose. Estoy sentado en la esquina de tu avión. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It is nice. And I'm gonna wait, wipe really quick so you can see how the first layer is looking. And you can compare it to whenever you, you're doing a, uh, a cover up. As you can see, it is not super dark towards the edge of, as I'm getting closer to the, to the brightest point of that, of that nose, the tip of the nose. So I'm gonna keep building it, but I am loving the fact that his skin is just taking it very well. So it's allowing me to add a little bit more texture. Like I said, I go over that on my seminar because also skin has a lot to do with what kind of concepts you're supposed to do on different people, different ethnicities take cover-ups differently. So like I said, that can take me a while to explain, but just know that uh, there is a trick to doing a lot of cover-ups depending on the client's ethnicity, the client's skin complexion, uh, where they're from, do they work a lot outside, do they work uh, indoors, do they play sports, all of those things matter. But that's a, that's a different conversation. Um, but yes, as far as him, he spends a lot of time indoors, uh, a little bit of outdoors when he goes to the beach, and, but he doesn't, his skin is well hydrated and he also eats very healthy. So that lets me know that I'm able to do this technique here very gently, and it allows me to just, you know, go right in. Yeah, but you have to consider your client's lifestyle in order to know how to cover it up, which is very interesting. Once I get into that topic, I can't stop. 
<laughs> I'm gonna go a little bit in here just to start creating a little bit of texture with this wrinkle that the nose has. And I'm actually gonna use this highlight of the mouth to my advantage because I really like the, how this is a little bit of highlight here. Oh, nice. There it is. As you can see, it's already taking shape. It's already taking the, the the dimension of the nose to a different level just by adding a little bit of contrast here and there. Once I add my light grays and I add my medium grays, oh, it's gonna make this nose really pop. But also don't be afraid to pack in that black. Study a lot your concept, make sure that uh, Make sure that you know where the contrast is gonna benefit you. Because there's times where you just follow, copy pasting the, the image and it's not gonna help you make, do a cover up. Sometimes you need to improvise a little bit. I'm gonna leave a little gap here between this wrinkle and the scribble technique so I can add my, my light tones and my white highlights and that's gonna give it that illusion that it's a wrinkle. So I'm gonna keep working on this corner here. And another thing I do wanna point out is the fact that with my 14 mile liner, I don't wanna go uh, deep into the skin. I wanna be in the surface, that way, uh, it helps me build my tones very slowly. Once I, I get comfortable with how the skeleton looks, then I go a little bit darker on the edges and it gives me that dimension. But as far as right now, I'm also gonna go a little bit more into the highlight area here, just enough. Because even though it is a, a big highlight area, those little um, amounts of textures that I'm adding, it's really gonna make it stand out and not make it look too empty. And as you can see, the lip is already disappearing just by using solid black. So that's, that gives me a really good uh, idea of how much I can do with the nose. It's really good to test um, little corners before you go all the way in, just, uh, just in case you are not too happy with what you're seeing, you're still able to correct it. Because remember that a cover-up can make you look very, con can make you feel very confused especially when there's a lot of lines going all, all over the place, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. And, uh, and when you're doing a cover-up, you don't want to get overwhelmed because once you reach that point, you're probably going to feel discouraged. You're going to feel like you can't do it. And I've been, I've been there. I've been in, in that situation where I get overwhelmed and I don't know how to get out of a situation. And now I'm stuck doing this cover-up. But luckily for me, after many years of uh, doing cover-ups, now I'm able to to get out of any situation I see and be able to say, okay, I'm gonna switch this technique to this technique to be able to, to accomplish it. Uh, but yeah, so number one thing is do not get frustrated. If you feel like it's not going your way, it's okay to step back, take a little break and communicate with your client, let them know, hey, you know what, I, got, I, I wanna make sure that I do the best job and I wanna take a little break. I wanna take a breather. And if worst case scenario, you, you're just not liking the piece in general, just send them home and, and figure it out. Figure it out at home uh, whenever you relax and, and rethink or think about how you're gonna make it better. But I understand cover-ups can be complicated, so that is why it's very important for you to build that skeleton from, uh, have a strong skeleton, a good foundation from the start by using solid black. Because if you keep relying on your grays, it's just not gonna happen because you you keep telling yourself, oh, it's okay, it's gonna look better once I add the grays. But grays are just there to give it the illusion that that it's a cover-up. Give it the illusion that you, you build tones. But what really creates uh, a good cover-up, it's just solid black. 
adding the grays and medium grays are just a little bit of a cherry on the top to make it look better. But uh, as you can see, it's already glowing. And I'm leaving a bigger gap at the edge of the nose here, just so I can have a chance to add a bigger white highlight here on the corner and, uh, and give it more of a, like a pop. Look at that, look at that wrinkle right there. Love it. Oof. Drop a comment if you have tried to do a cover up in the last week and drop a comment if you have a, a, a tattoo coming up, a cover up coming up. And let me know what you're doing. Maybe if I, if I read it on a good day, I might, I might help you out on the comment section. Sometimes I get way too busy and I forget to read the comment section, but I try to reply to everyone as much as I can. And if you have done a cover up, did you successfully cover it up? Or did you feel like you could have done better? Of course, everybody, every artist can do better in every tattoo, but did you feel like you could have prepared a little bit more? Let me know what was the concept, let me know what was the, the idea, and maybe I'll be able to give you some pointers when the client comes back. I think you'll be, but just know that if you attempt a cover up and it's not going your way, just know that it's fixable. It's okay, don't stress. As far as what I'm doing here, I'm also navigating a lot because it is the second day of the torso, so the body can be very tender, very, uh, very sensitive. So make sure to uh, make sure to take your time and use uh, a technique that's going to allow you to, to not irritate the skin more on the second day. Communicate with your client because navigating is going to be really important too. Like, ask your client, do you feel it in this corner? Do you feel like uh, it's a lot of pain? And if they do feel a lot of pain, be flexible enough to move to a different area be, while the other area kind of relaxes. Right. Very, uh, very important to, ooh, look at that foundation. It's already, it's already making the nose look three-dimensional. We'll give it another five more minutes to tattoo and then We'll call it before I start adding the grays, but yeah, definitely with the grays, I have to move a lot more and be a little bit more um, precise. So I'm probably gonna have to record a time lapse on it. Cause I need to concentrate for fucking Emilio Gonzalez. Cause this piece is gonna be all over the place. We gotta make sure this shit looks amazing. But uh, that doesn't mean I don't try on the other pieces. <laughs> but I gotta make sure that this one stands out a lot, especially because it is a huge cover-up. I mean, he has every part of the torso tattooed, so I have to concentrate. This is not something I can, I can just be talking and doing all these things, you know? So, but I am gonna be posting the whole video from beginning to end after I post this one. So be on the lookout, because after I release this one, I'm releasing the whole, the, the full video from beginning to end, from us going to a, a nice little restaurant, talking about the piece, how we came up with it, to day one, day two, and day three. Emilio's gonna be telling you about his experience and sharing things that, uh, that he went through and maybe sharing his regret. <laughs> after three days of getting tattooed. <laughs> But yes, if you haven't, before I finish this video, uh, go to my Instagram. I have the link to my website where you can purchase tickets to my seminar coming up in Miami, Florida, January 25th. And uh, they're going to be giving you a tour around the whole entire Dynamic Headquarters. Uh, and also, if you have time, um, by, uh, if you, you know, obviously Emilio is going to be accepting your application for the All-Star Tattoo Convention. but. Uh, submit your application for the all-star and if uh, Emilio likes your work and he feels like you're an amazing artist he's gonna give you a booth so you can be tattooing next to some amazing artists uh, in November 15, 16 and 17 and it's gonna be amazing I promise you this is my second time this is my second year going and it is the only thing I'm looking forward to the whole entire year relating to tattoos because it is there's nothing more exciting than to be tattooing next to the 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 most insane artist in the world.
Ok, Emilio, relájate, muchacho. I'll let you, I'll let you stretch real quick. Sabes que yo prefiero darle. Ok.